Stirring the coffee with the giant chopsticks of truth using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started, but first, percolated coffee. I'm not sure if this is the one that was sent to me from Australia or Canada, but I'll check. I like to perk coffee on Fridays. Let's get started. Imagine your life like this. Hour number one. You wake up, you make coffee, you read for an hour. A little self-care going on. Hour number two, you create a video from your kitchen table or your deck. Hour three, you send an email out to your subscribers with info on it that's useful, actionable, and doesn't waste people's time, and you give a few offers. Hour number four, you coach a client. Hour number five, you answer emails from people wanting your service and make dates on calendars. It's now 9 a.m., and you did a day's work before most people even leave their driveway to go to a job that they hate. Now you do a workout or you go for a power walk while listening to a podcast or audio book that is teaching a skill. That's a pretty nice life. That's a pretty nice life. I can show you how to do that. People giving you money, what a great metric of how appreciated your product or services are. Don't kid yourself. People patting you on the back isn't the metric you want. Likes, hearts, comments, you know, okay, they did a little bit. The real metric, pulling the credit card out, pulling the wad of cash out. Giving you money for a product or a service is the ultimate way that people respect you. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. If you're not making money with it, then it's just a hobby, and there's nothing wrong with hobbies. But how much time are you wasting? How many hobbies do you have? For many people, they go to a job they hate and then just do nothing but hobbies their whole life. Every weekend is a hobby. Hobby time. Your new nickname is going to be Hobby Lobby. Genuine confidence is created through wins, not participation trophies. Ignore outside praise and criticism, put in the work, and let the scoreboard tell you exactly what the score is. For me, the scoreboard might be a bank account. It might be my income for the day. I have a certain goal. I'm working towards that, even at my age. You should be doing it even more because you're probably younger than me. A lot of people say, what are you going to leave to your kids? Sure, you could leave money to your kids, but you know what's better to leave them with? Skills and a path that they can replicate in their life. You, yeah, you, you probably play it safe too much. You want to be all set, don't you? You want to be taken care of. You want that job that you know is not going to go away. It keeps you down here when you could be up here. But it's safe down here, isn't it? Your comfort zone, that circle. Anything outside that circle is just a little bit uncomfortable. But I will tell you this, everything that you want in life is outside the circle, outside your comfort zone. Every single thing that you want. Everything. There's two kinds of people in this world. There are the, gee, I'm glad I did that, and the darn I wish I had done that kind of people. What will you be? Every gambler knows that the secret to surviving is knowing what to throw away and knowing what to keep. Kenny Rogers, 1978, from the song The Gambler. If you have a skill that a lot of people don't, 
why not automate that skill rather than do a trading time for money operation with it? You have a lot of a skill that a lot of people don't. Create income flow. Learn how to monetize it. You do that by creating it, systematizing it, automating it, and then obviously the money will come in. But you are afraid that nobody would want your skill. You're afraid that you're, you're doubtful that people will actually give you money for what you can do. That is not true. That's a lie from the pit of hell. We're going to be talking about a lot of those lies. In the time, well, let me put it this way, hey Heisenberg, in the time that you watched your favorite binge series on Netflix or Amazon or wherever, you could have created a course, an ebook, a video channel, or a podcast that creates monthly revenue for you. You could have turned Breaking Bad into Making Bank. So what's the latest thing you're going to binge on? What's the latest thing that you're just going to sit in front of a TV with? Think about it. What do you do? Did you earn the right to watch that TV series? Breaking Bad, Sopranos, Ozark, Stranger Things. Did you earn the right? Did you work your butt off, meet your financial goals, and then earn the right to watch that? If not, you have zero, zero right to sit down in front of that TV and relax and watch a show. Earn the right to do these things, and then they are so much more sweeter. They really are. Because then you can truly relax. Working a job you moan about in a relationship with a woman who lost respect for you, no inspirational people around you in real life, no wonder you're depressed, no wonder you're sexless, no wonder you're fat sounds more like discouragement to me. The answer is courage. Courage. Disappointment and discouragement could be the most widespread mental disease in the world. Not depression. Think about that. Maybe you're not depressed. Maybe you're just discouraged. That's something to think about, isn't it? Whenever my dad would go back to his hometown, he said it was like the same people standing on the same street corners, and he's glad that he left. I will never forget that as long as I live. Literally driving through that town with him. And he says, yep, there he is, still there after 40 years. Oh, there he is. Same people standing on the same street corners. Can you imagine that? I wonder, well, and of course, they're probably all long gone by now, but I wonder if their sons are now standing on the street corners. Somebody less qualified than you is making bank because they're not afraid of asking for the sale. Can you imagine that? The difference between the top performers in life, not only just on a sales team, but in life in general, are the people who ask for the sale, not just present and leave it up to the purchaser, the prospect. But they literally ask for the sale. They create the conditions for buying very simple. They're guiding people. It's called closing the sale. That's why when I was in the hair industry full time, I used to say I give purposeful haircuts. I help guys close the sale, get the girl, and land the job. What is the purpose of your life? What is it? You need to persuade. Are you just going to sit back and expect the wife or girlfriend to come into your life if that's your thing? Probably not a good methodology, is it? Imagine what you could do if you weren't afraid. That's pretty deep. Think about it. Imagine what you could do if you weren't afraid. Let me take a sip of coffee while you think about that.
credit monitoring companies. They congratulate you on an excellent credit score. And then they pile on the loan and credit card offers. Get good credit so you can go more into debt. <laughs> I guess I'm from that cash generation where cash is king. Well, it's quite clear that there are attempts to crash the economy and make you more dependent on the government. They're crushing food, fuel production, food production. There's shortages. It's all fake. It's all fake. Don't, don't think for one second that it's not fake. Anytime you hear of a shortage, it's fake. Gas prices going up, what, $10 or more per gallon in California? Are you freaking kidding me? It's all fake. It's all meant to create a response, and don't think that it's not. There was a day when a man built something. He had a horse, a map, an axe, a shovel, had grit, determination, and no time to moan about anything or any one, any situation. Now, you, you have a smartphone, you got a PC, high-speed internet, unlimited access to mentors, inspiration, coaches, and opportunities. They are your horse, your axe, your map. It's never been easier. This is a great time for you to start creating the extra income that you need and becoming the person God wants you to be for those that believe in God. If you focused on creating multiple streams of income instead of talking politics, Trump, FJB, the Jews, Illuminati, and speculating about conspiracies, which are all guilty pleasures of mine, the Illuminati conspiracy stuff, you would be much happier. Do you think that you could create one extra stream of income by the end of summer? So here we are at the end of June. You got July... In August, by September 1st, do you think that you can create another stream of income in two months? Do you think you can do it? Focus. Stay on task like a train on a track. You got this. By the end of the year, you're going to be writing me and thanking me for pushing you in that direction. I remember talking to my kids about the dangers of hip-hop lyrics. One of the kids said, you mean kind of like the stuff you listen to? Hey, hey, mama said, the way you move, gonna make you sweat, gonna make you groove. Ah, uh, ah, uh, child, the way you shake that thing, gonna make you burn, gonna make you sting. Led Zeppelin, 1971. You know, the kids had a point there, right? Some of the stuff I used to listen to isn't any better than what my kids were listening to. Being fat and overweight is very expensive and will cost you in the long run. The trim life should be your goal. You don't have to be jacked and tanned, although what a, what a great goal that would be. But to be trim and strong and muscular you don't have to be a damn bodybuilder. Anything other than being trim and strong is going to be expensive as you get older. The toll that it takes on your body is going to be unbelievable. It will be the biggest struggle you've ever had in your life if you don't pursue the trim life. It's important. The RoundTheBendSteakhouse.com has a testicle festival every year. It's in Nebraska. There's actually a testicle festival. What the? The testicle festival, established in 1993. The festival is held annually on Saturday of Father's Day weekend. If you look around at our festivals, you see people eating beef fries, drinking ice-cold beer, and dancing to live music and participating in our ball-eating contest. The party goes on in our 10,000-square-foot ballroom. I'm sure the pun is intended. 
you know, we have an out outdoor beer garden set up with spools, so there's plenty of room for everybody. So on June 18th, last week, there was the 29th annual testicle festival. Food, bowl fries, hamburger, cheeseburger, corn dog, nachos, chicken strips. Is that what they call them? Bowl fries? Oh, that's different. Testicle festival. Stuff people come up with, man. Although there are some guys that don't have to go to a testicle festival to be eating balls. We found that out this week. Didn't we? A lot of ball eaters out there. <laughs> Alright, it's too early for that kind of joke. Let the bloating games begin. May the odds ever be in your favor. You know who said that? Carbs. Isn't that true? The more carbs you eat, the more bloat. Like, if you just, like, eliminated carbs or severely reduced them, your pants would fall off you. Seriously, you could actually tighten your belt just another notch in one week by minimizing carbs in your life. Holy cow. In one week. One week. I love this picture of a guy kneeling down in front of a woman, proposing. He's got a five-gallon gas can. He says, will you marry me? Instead of giving her a ring, he's giving her five gallons of gas. Because that's pretty expensive these days. I can't wait to live in a city. Said no man ever. Oh, how's shithole life doing for you? Oh my god, I can't even imagine living in a city right now. Can't even imagine it. I'm having a hard time living just four miles out the shithole. It's pretty bad. Pretty bad. I am creating a video course on how to get relief from anxiety disorder, and it's going to cost less than a bottle of lorazepam. Think about that. Do you suffer from anxiety? Do you have anxiety disorder? Do you have anxiety attacks? I know what you can do to relieve that. It might not eliminate it, but it certainly will relieve it. And I'm creating that course that's going to be available in a couple weeks. Everyone is a teacher. Everyone is a student. Be thankful for what you learn, but monetize what you teach. You'll have imposter syndrome at first, not believing anyone would actually fork over their hard-earned money to you for what you know. I like to say one phone call with me and you won't be able you won't be able to wait to start monetizing your knowledge. That's one of the things that I offer is a solutions phone call and then a one month later a follow-up session if you want to do that. Normally I work with people who are going through some shit I work with businesses, but this right here, this particular call that I'm talking about is to help you realize, line up things, and start monetizing your knowledge. You can do that, even if it's just to put gas in the car or pay for your cell phone. In addition to what you already do, you have knowledge. You know how to do something that other people don't know how to do. When are you going to monetize that and get paid for it? You can do that. I am absolutely convinced that the phrase, I'll start tomorrow, or I'll start next week, or I'll start after summer is over, I'm absolutely convinced that those phrases are from the pit of hell. No, you will start today. Even if it's writing out a business plan, you're going to start today. I never want to hear anyone moan and groan how hard it is to make money when there's a dude making over six figures, unclogging, making unclogging street drain videos. He is documented as making as much as 207000 a year 
17, over 17,000 a month. Unclogging street drain videos. Stop telling me it's hard to make money. Stop telling me, I don't know what to do. Copy what someone else is doing. You might make 150,000 doing it. All right, so you won't make the 200K, but you will make the 150 or the 100 or more than you're currently making now. Follow what other successful people are doing, duplicate it, put your spin on it, and do it. No one can tell me how hard it is to make money. I don't give a crap who you are. Can't do it. No such thing as a high-value man. Everyone talks about the high-value man. You can't be a high-value man without high-value skills. So what are the high-value skills? Being able to talk to people, being able to write, write how you speak, solving problems for people, doing things, listen, listen, doing things that other people consider tedious and a pain in the ass. If you do those things, people will give you money. But you have to ask them. Ooh. Fear is keeping you away from your goals, like I said earlier in the show. I just got new tires on my truck, Yokohama tires, recommended by the actual repair garage themselves. I could have chose anything. I said, what do you suggest? He said, Yokohama's. Well, I'm glad I said yes, because number one, it's the quietest ride I've ever had. I feel like my truck is just purring as it's going down the road. I don't hear or feel the tires as I'm driving. Instantly, boom, became a fan. To the point I love these tires so much, I could probably work for Yokohama and sell the tires. Here's a pro tip. If you love it, you can sell it. Sales is nothing but a transfer of enthusiasm. That, take that enthusiasm, create an irresistible offer, learn to close, lead people to making a decision, just that alone is going to put you in the top 10% of men. Add a little bit of strength to that. The trim life, you're in the top 1% of men. It's not that hard. You got this. Here's a great writing example. I, I love this. Here's a good, better, and best example. A good headline is, How to Buy Real Estate. A better line, How to Buy Real Estate with No Money Down. The best, How Women in Philadelphia or Montgomery County can buy real estate with no money down. Niche down. Niche down. You're going to market something? You're going to market it to who? Dentists? Chiropractors? How about dentists or chiropractors in a solo practice in such a county? Or new chiropractors or dentists in a solo practice. How specific can you get with your offers to people about your service? How specific can you get in who you deal with? You can go to counseling for depression or you can buy a motorcycle, you can work out daily, you can go camping, you can build fires, you can watch sunrises, you can stargaze, or you can go to counseling for depression. What do you want to do? What's good for you? I am absolutely 100% convinced that most people, we're going to circle back on this, are suffering from disappointment and discouragement versus depression. But therapists and psychiatrists can't make money helping people who are disappointed and discouraged. You got to be depressed. It's got to be clinical. And I have to be able to write a script for you. I remember growing up, my dad 
If I asked him for money for something, he would direct me to a shovel or a rake, to shovel people's driveways in the winter or a rake to rake people's lawn. I always had money in my pocket, always, when I was a kid. Always had money because I was always doing some kind of hustle. And finally, if you have a bad day, it's your fault. If you have a good day, it's your fault. Stop bitching with me. Well, what if a car hits you? Shut the fuck up, loser. Stop looking for the negative shit. Fucking stop it. Just fucking stop it. Take control. There's nothing that angers people more than telling them to take full fucking control of their life. There will always be people who will find a reason to disagree with you. Create some distance between you and them. They will fucking drag you down. They see the glass half empty, not half full. There's people who will look in the sky and say, it's partly cloudy. When I say, it's partly sunny. There is a difference. If you have a bad day today, it's your fault. If you have a good day today, it's your fault. Take full responsibility for everything in your life. The fastest way to improve yourself is to take full responsibility for your circumstances, or as Jocko would say, extreme responsibility. And with that, finish your coffee, and I'll see you on the next Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason. But I don't want that big giant thing in front of me as well. I'm not interested in that big giant thing. Although there are some guys that don't have to go to a testicle festival to be eating balls. We found that out this week. <laughs>